And so let's look at an example of uh, bloom filters. And bloom filters are, are used when we have large data sets and we really just want to know if, if, uh, if a piece of data such as a hash signature exists on uh, a, a database. So what we normally do is that we take uh, a word that we're looking for, it could be a hash signature and so on, and then we'll put it through two types of hash, uh, in this case murmur and FNV. And then the output for that will be a position with inside a bit vector. So in this case, we've taken the hash using murmur and we've selected this bit here uh, to be set and then this bit. Okay, so if we take an example, uh, so this is one of our one of our hashes is using murmur and the other F FNV. And in this case, when we add the word Fred, uh, then we get a uh, position 21 for murmur and that sets that one there and 14 okay so in the in the bit vector in this case we have a 32 bit vector we set those two bits now we add Bert so Bert when we do the murmur then it, uh, it uh, creates at bit 29 and also bit 8 so we add those to the the existing bits and this is now our bit vector uh, table. Now we add Greg, so Greg is bit 11 which is this one and bit 22 which is this one. So we can see here, here are the bits that are set after three values have been added. So now let's try an example. So now we take the hash of Amy. Amy then gives us a 16 for Murmur and a 12 so what we do to see if it's on the in, within the data set is that we look at bit position 16. Okay, bit position 16, which is here, and bit position 12, which is here. Both are zeros, so it cannot exist. Only if the bits were both one would we know that it exists on the database. So we can say for sure that that does not is not on the 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 in, within the data set. Now, if we look at Greg, that's bit eleven and twenty two. When we do our murmur and FMV, so if we go to bit eleven, we see it's set, and bit twenty two, we see it's set. So there is a chance that it's that it's there. Okay, these bits could have been set by some other uh, uh, some other word. So there is a chance, and we can work out the probability of that that chance, uh, depending on the, the the bit vector. Okay, so let's see if we can have a look at an example. Okay, so the the two hashes we're using are non-crypto hashes of Murmur and FMV. Okay, we can use multiple uh, hash functions. So, for example, if we say Fred, uh, we're going to be using the 64-bit version of Murmur here and the 64-bit version of FMV. So what we could do is this this will this converts to an integer, and then we take a modulo uh, 32 to be able to get uh, a value, a remainder from 0 to 31. Okay. So it's uh, fairly easy, fairly easy to, to do that. We take the the word, we calculate the hash, and then we do a modulo 32 in this case because we're only using 32 bits in our bit position table. Okay, so we'll have a look at our Bloom filter. Okay, so first we'll add Fred. Okay, so you see Fred from the FN, from the Murmur, we get bit position 21 and a 14, which is this one. And from the FNB, we get the 14, which is this one. Now what we'll do is we'll add Bert. Okay, Bert is 29, this time for Murmur, and 8 from FNV. And we'll add Greg. So Greg is 11, which is this one, 
and 22, which is roughly about here. Okay, so this is our resultant uh, bit vector here that we have for our Bloom's filter. Now what we'll do is we'll check for Amy. Okay, so we can see here it said that Amy isn't there because bit position 16 and 12 aren't set. Now if we look for Greg, then when we do the search it says it might be there because it's 11 and 22. Okay, so it's just like what we've actually done there. So the code that we're actually using, uh, so this is the first hash that we look for and this is using the hashlib library and it's calculating a value uh, into an unsigned integer. We then do modulo 32 to give a value between 0 and 31 and then we just return that. And the same for the other one, for FMV, we just get that unsigned integer, find the modulo 32, and then return that as a result. Okay, so these become the bit positions here that we calculate. If we wanted a larger uh, bit vector, all we have to do is to increase that value here and here, and obviously we would increase the size of our bit array, and then it, the whole thing becomes scalable. So for the hash table we can obviously grow a large hash table because in this case we'll get 2 to the power of 64 for the different values. Okay, so that shows how we use our Bloom's filter.